manifestation, right, is actually the intersection of a calm nervous system and then realizing you're worthy. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Today, we're talking about the topic of starting over in life, whether it be divorce, career change, relocating for whatever reason. We all go through these life changes, right? So today, we're going to talk about how to find support and the confidence to start over again. And we also talk about if you are the support role, like say you know someone in your life going through a major life change, how can you be better at supporting the people you love who are going through that fresh start. Our guests today are Olivia Howell and Jenny Dryzen of Fresh Starts Registry. Fresh Starts Registry is a first of its kind platform built to support those going through brave and bold changes by helping them every step of the way and revolutionizing the art of starting again. Created by two sisters, Olivia and Jenny, Fresh Starts provides support in two ways that are completely free to a user of their platform, the Fresh Starts Registry and the Fresh Starts Expert Guide. The support Fresh Starts provides doesn't stop at divorce. They also support many going through job changes, stepping into their truth and coming out, living through grief, long distance moves, celebrating brave choices such as buying their first home and more. Above all, Fresh Starts is there to support any and every brave decision. All of them are worthy. Before we get started, I just want to share a quick reminder that our 2024 Artists of Life workbook is launching on October 18th. This is our best-selling yearly workbook that can help you plan your most intentional and successful year. So you can find that at shop.lavendaire.com. Hello, Olivia and Jenny. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you both doing today? Uh, we're good. Thank you for having us. If you can't hear, it is a storm here in New York. <laughs> so there is tons of rain in the background, but hopefully you can't hear that. But I can't hear it, but okay. I hope you'll be okay. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm good. It's really nice to see you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having us. We're very excited to be here. So are you both in New York? Where are you both exactly? Olivia is in New York, and I just recently relocated to um, Edinburgh, Scotland. <gasps> oh my gosh. So what was the reason for that? I got married. <laughs> a man was the reason, a fresh start. Um, he was sort of my, uh, another fresh start. But yeah, I fell in love and we got engaged and I came here a couple months ago um, and we just got married earlier this month. Oh, congratulations. Oh, that's a lot of changes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. So do you, so you guys are now working together remotely still? We on do. The business? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So why don't you tell us your story? Tell us what is Fresh Starts Registry? How did it begin? Yeah. So um, the story begins with many, where many stories begin, which is through a divorce. And um, I got to, I got separated in April, 2019. And you know, when you get separated, half of your things get taken out of your house by your ex and the other half of the stuff you don't really want to see anymore because it reminds you of your ex. And so my sister Jenny came over and we were kind of cleaning out the house and donating a lot of things. And it was that moment that I realized, you know, this is when people need to restock their life. You know, we have wedding registries and baby registries, which I had all of those things and it was wonderful, but I really needed new things and I needed the community support. So I did a little Googling. I looked around to see if divorce registry was a thing and it was not a thing yet. The only thing that came up in Google was people saying, why is there not a divorce registry? This is when people need things the most. So uh, at the time, we had a marketing agency, which we still have, which I've been doing marketing forever. And I thought, well, we founded one business. Let's found another business. Let's, let's build this thing. So we, I, I, you know, I brought the idea to Jenny and then she kind of went through her own fresh start, which I'll let her explain. Yeah. She brought the idea to me and I was like, I had had a um, wedding planned for May, 2020. So I'm sure you can imagine what happened to that. Um, I had been with my partner, um, my ex fiance at that point for like nine years and we were going into our 10th year of being together and I was like ready to have a baby and sort of trying to figure out what to do with this 
now like thrice canceled COVID wedding. And I said to Olivia, like, I don't have the bandwidth for this. I, we No new ideas. She's the more machine. She's always coming up with great ideas. And I was like, no, we can't do this. Um, and then cut to June, 2021, when I ended up leaving my fiance and I shouldn't say leaving. We broke up. It was very mutual. And I conversely to Olivia, she stayed in her house. I left my apartment and I had like what I call like very um, adult home that was set up in Queens. I always say to my friends, like we had tape, we had all the spices, you know, we had like olive oil containers. Like it was just, it was completely set up home. And I, I left, I packed up all my stuff. You know, we broke up on a Wednesday and I drove away on Thursday and I had to go I had never lived alone. You know, I went from my college dorms to my mom's house to living with my fiance and I had to find a new place. And then I was in the new place and I had, I had nothing like <laughs> the clothes on my back. Basically, I didn't bring any furniture. Um, I had no plates, no cups and like nothing, no towels. And so this idea came back of like, you know, when we go through these big changes, our communities, they want to help us. Our people, like our village wants to support us. I had friends offering to break down boxes. I had friends offering to build furniture. I had people giving me things, but it would have been so amazing to be like, actually what I need is a pillow <laughs> and, and have somebody buy me a pillow rather than, you know, so many throw blankets. I don't know how many throw blankets a person could own. So that was sort of the idea I came back up that was June. And by August, we had, you know, the website and the LLC and we were off the ground. I love that both of you had your own fresh start story and it inspired starting this together. Um, in terms of like, like the starting the business part, was that hard for you or did you already both have experience? Cause you mentioned you had the marketing agency, but this seems like it's completely different. It is completely different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is very different. We did not, I think, we really didn't anticipate wh what was going to happen or where it was going to go. We knew that we had a couple components to the website. Well, we have built everything ourselves from the ground up. And so we knew that we wanted a registry component, obviously. Um, you know, so people could come and we have built out bundles of products based on rooms of the house, based on budget. We're powered by Amazon for safety and security reasons. And so we, we knew we wanted a registry, but we also knew that we wanted it to be a one-stop shop for all of the experts that you need whenever you go through life changes. So Fresh Starts is for any brave life decision. We have people who come to us when they're in a relationship breakup or a divorce, but also living through grief or job changes or moving, coming out, transitioning, women and men who are getting their PhDs and medical degrees and all these awesome, big, brave life changes. You deserve a registry. We always say everybody is worthy of a registry. We're all about like supporting people and meeting people where they are. So it was really important for us to then build out a platform of experts who are vetted and safe people, everything from, you know, lawyers and business coaches to life coaches and Reiki healers and realtors and all the good stuff in between. So you could come get all the things you needed for a fresh start and then all the people you needed for your hype team as well. So we did build this out. We've had many iterations <laughs> over the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, with any business, as you know, it always has a life of its own. So it's kind of, we always say the business tells us what it needs as, as it grows and we kind of follow it. Wow. I mean, give us an example. I, I, you mentioned some people, but I'm also, I'm just curious of what's the most popular, what are the services that people need when they need a fresh start? So there's the registry, which is like, like where people can help buy you what you need, right? What else is like really popular? Yeah. So on the registry side, I would say the top items that people register for or ask for from their community are towels and sheets and utensils and dishes uh, and kind of those very basic items. And then on the expert side, I would say, you know, we always say a fresh start begets a fresh start. So it's, we have people who come for one thing, like let's say a divorce, but then they end up having to move, right? So then they need a realtor and then they need a new job. So then they need a business coach. It also depends on the time of year. So right now we're getting a lot of traction for our business and resume coaches because of the September surge that just happened. Uh, we have a lot of people who come for our life coaches. We have an amazing set of divorce coaches, which is a, a really necessary thing to have during a divorce. So, 
you know, we always say for every life, big life event that you go through, there's about 10 experts that you encounter, which is really wild. And so we wanted to make sure we had people who were safe and available for everybody through all of that. All right, my loves, it's time for a break with our sponsor, Factor. If you're too busy to cook but still want to eat well, look no further than Factor. It's America's top ready-to-eat meal kit with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your doorstep. With Factor, you'll save precious time, nourish your body, and stay right on track with your healthy lifestyle. Factor saves me so much time and effort on food prep. I love that the meals taste good and introduce variety to my everyday meals. Even better that their meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You can choose from over 34 weekly flavor-packed meals, each with around or fewer than 550 calories per serving. You can also complement your meals with add-ons like snacks or cold-pressed juices and smoothies. Head to factormeals.com slash TLL50 and use the code TLL50 to get 50% off. That's code TLL50 at factormeals.com slash TLL50 to get 50% off. I just love this idea. I think it's so smart because it's true that we need, like, we really need a village to support us when we're going through big life things. And most times people feel like they're going through these things alone. So working on this project and also living through your own fresh starts, like what have you learned about starting over? What advice can you share? Let's just get into that. That's a great question. So I think one of the things Olivia and I try to remind each other and we tell our community all the time is there's no end and there's no beginning, right? Life is just a series of fresh starts. Every Monday is a fresh start. Every, you know, first of the month is a fresh start. It's constantly happening. You are constantly evolving. It's very rare that we get to get up and win an Oscar and say, I did it. I did it. I accomplished it. You know, we're just constantly becoming as people. So it's like, if there's a setback, don't worry, you can wake up again tomorrow and start again. And that when you are going through these things, you are constantly grounding yourself and asking yourself why and where you want to be going. And I think that that's very important to us because so many people are, you know, sort of forced into these lives that maybe they wouldn't have wanted. They, there's not a lot, there's often people get to the divorce point of their life and they're like, I wish I had thought about this. I wish I had introspected a little bit more. And so we're always trying to challenge our, our community to really look inside, interrogate their decisions, interrogate their desires, and make sure that it's something that really brings them joy. Something that's also very important to us that I have on a sweatshirt is there are no rules. There's no right way to do life. There's no checklist. There's no reward when you get to the end of, you know, it. if you stay in an unhappy marriage, nobody's going to give you a gold medal, you know, after 50 years. There are no rules. You get to make up your path and you get to make up your rules. As long as you are safe, and in the pursuit of joy, like do what you want, go, go figure it out and enjoy yourself and try to create a life that you don't want to escape. Love it. Olivia, do you have something? No, I love that. And the other, the other side of what we do, which is really important to us is the support side. So uh, we do a lot of education about bridging the gap between people who need support and people who want to support. So we have on the website, when you build a registry, we have scripts that we wrote that you can literally copy and paste and and put in a text message and send with your registry because you don't know what to say often when you are trying to ask for support. And we have written over probably 250 scripts at this point for all different life events. So you know, we share them on social media and we text them out to people to use. And I, I share them on Twitter of all things, right? So if you have a friend who is, you know, her lost her job, you can come find one of our scripts and say, okay, this is what a, is a good thing to say to her. So, you know, we're all about meeting people where they are on their journey and supporting them there and honoring and validating their brave life decisions. Can you also speak on the difficulty in in making that decision to start over? Because I, I think that's also another hump that a lot of people struggle with is even before they, they you know what I mean, they make that shift. It's the, like that, that tension and that, that difficulty. So let's, I mean, any advice that you can share on that? 
Olivia, I feel like that's a you question. Yeah. So I'm also a certified life coach and a, a clinical hypnotherapist. And so I, I work one-on-one with a lot of people going through life changes. And so I'll see this a lot. Everything goes back to your question of worthiness. Am I worthy of this? Right? Am I worthy of joy? Am I worthy of a fresh start? And the answer is always yes. Right? But our subconscious is often programmed because of things usually in our childhood from ages like zero to seven of maybe other narratives and people telling us things that we don't think we're worthy of things. And so one of the questions that I always ask people, no matter what, when they come and they say, can I make a registry or should I start again? Or should I look for this new job? I always say, well, who told you you couldn't, right? Who told you you can't? And so we get to make the decisions, like Jenny was saying, right? There's no rules. We get to make those decisions. One of the things that we always recommend when you're going through this decision-making process is a lot of journaling, right? Is is really kind of, and not like a traditional pros and cons list, right? Which are wonderful, but really journaling you know, about what you, what your ideal life will look like, right? What do you want to feel when you, when you wake up in the morning? What songs do you want to have playing in your house? What scents do you want around you? And really starting to visualize whatever that next step is. And once you can visualize the next step, you can step into that. And that's something that is really important in terms of the registry side too, right? So we believe that let's say you're going through um, a breakup and your best friend buys you new sheets from your registry and you're sleeping in your new sheets, you can actually start to visualize your new life happening before you. And the really cool thing too about the registry aspect is that you get to decide on things that bring you joy, right? You get to pick out the utensils and the sheets and the towels. Those little decisions actually help reprogram your subconscious to feel confident to make the bigger decisions like big, brave life decisions, right? So it's all very cyclical and all works together, but it all comes back to that question of, am I worthy? And Yes, always. But sometimes we need to journal or work with others to get to that point. You know, I have, I didn't even thought about this in context, Olivia, but when I left my ex and I didn't know, I moved back in with my mom at 33 years old. And I had, like I said, I left everything there. And my ex was very um, involved with decisions around the apartment. So I hadn't gotten to choose a lot of what I loved for things. You know, I wanted white towels and he didn't want white towels. I wanted a brass bed and he didn't want that. And I came back and I was looking for an apartment and the apartment that I really wanted, they were giving me trouble about. And I ended up getting it, but I didn't know if I was going to get it. And one night I just was like, I just felt so stuck. I felt like I'm just going to live in my mom's house until I'm forever. And I don't want to live in my mom's house forever. Not like this. And I thought I'm going to go to Target and I'm going to buy towels because whatever happens in my life, I'm going to need towels. Like I'm I'm inevitably going to need towels. I'm going to end up somewhere. And it was this grounding exercise that I did with myself. And I went and I bought these beautiful plush white towels. And like the next day I signed the lease, you know, and it was that I needed to sort of say, okay, it's going to happen. That is what I want whether it's this apartment or another apartment, whatever it is. And I got my brass bed. It was the first time in my life. And I think so often for women who are like my age, you know, 25 to 40 going through divorce, it's the first time we're ever really living alone. And it's the first time that we ever really get to curate our space in the exact way that we want to. And I actually had photos taken of that apartment before I moved out because I was like, I love this place and I want to preserve it and remember exactly what it looks like when it's just me, there's nobody to, you know, <laughs> to, to compromise with and I get to make all the choices. Yeah, that actually sounds really nice (laughs) to be able to have everything that you want. No, I love this idea that you are worthy of what you want because a lot of times we want things, but it feels like a dream. Like, oh, it's not going to really happen. I have to always compromise. I have to settle. But that's that's not true. Like you said, there's no rules. And I think that's really eye-opening if you really take time to like marinate in that idea. Like I'm worthy of everything that I want. Like I, I don't have to that hold back. Once that clicks in, you like the next part of your life starts. Exactly. That's actually manifestation, right? Is actually the intersection of a calm nervous system and then realizing you're worthy, right? So your your body physically has to be open to the universe receiving things, and you have to believe that you can receive. 
And once that happens, 100%, I have seen this happen time and again with clients. It happens with us all the time. That That's when the energy shifts and the universe gives you exactly what you want. The hardest part for most people is realizing and deciding what they want, right? And, and often when I sit down with clients to do coaching or when we talk to people in DMs, you know, we have a lot of people who will reach out to us and they're like, I feel really stuck. I don't know what I want to do. I'm like, well, what do you want? And they're like, I don't know actually what I want, right? So a lot of the work we do with people, you know, both one-on-one and then also in our Fresh Starts community and all that, um, it's just kind of talking to people about what makes them happy and what brings them joy. Yeah. So it's it's like figuring out what you want and then number two, believing that you're worthy of of having that. And I mean, that's another topic that can also go deep. Like how do you undo those beliefs that you're, you're not worthy and that you don't deserve this? Like Olivia, do you want to s- say something about that? I feel like, you know. I love this question. This is literally what I do all the time. So a lot of those beliefs, um, well, let me go back for a second. We can only process as human beings a certain amount of information every day, right? So we take in a certain amount of information. Our brain will dilute that information. It processes it. It stores it in places. From the time we are in the womb, this happens. And we are then internalizing the things that we're taking in. So if you are taking in information that maybe you're not worthy, right? From a couple of things maybe your parents said or a neighbor kid said or whatever, some teacher at school said, right? When you're a kid, you're going to internalize that you are not worthy. When you get to a certain point in your life and you want to do that inner work and heal, a lot of that subconscious work can be done by things like journaling, but also hypnosis, which is going into a deep meditation and working with a special, you know, a clinical hypnotherapist to reprogram those thoughts, right? Hypnosis is literally just going into a deep meditation and opening up again, just like with a calm nervous system, opening up your, your subconscious mind to reprogram and reprocess where those thoughts are coming in. And Our subconscious loves repetition, right? So listening to subliminal audios, which are awesome. You can get them online. There's a lot of wonderful people who make them. Tapping, uh, emotional freedom technique, which is wonderful. I use it all the time, even with my kids. And, uh, you know, also just, uh, again, working on your nervous system regulation and then bringing in a lot of positive affirmations. So we work with a lot of people on building positive affirmations. When I do group coaching, uh, we do a lot of positive affirmations. And, you know, if you don't use them um, in a maybe like a correct quote unquote way, it may sound silly. But when you pair those positive affirmations with all of the other internal work that you're doing and the calming your nervous system, you will definitely start to see a shift. But it also, you know, you have to really surround yourself with people who believe in you too, right? Community is huge. We always say community care is self-care. And if you are not surrounding yourself with people who believe in you, it's very hard to believe in yourself. Yeah. I, I love all of those different things that you mentioned. And I, I personally love positive affirmations. And then just hearing you say repetition is how you get into your subconscious mind. Like that, that's a, it's a nice reminder because some people don't believe in positive affirmations. They're like, it doesn't feel real when I'm saying them or reciting them. But, but you're saying like just repeating it, eventually you're going to start to believe it because it's like stuck in your mind. Right. Yeah. I always say like when you are trying to work on something, I am worthy or other people's opinions of me are none of my business, which is was like what I had to work on, um, that you should just repeat it when you're doing things that have nothing to do with those affirmations. So you're making the bed, you're saying to yourself, other people's opinions of me aren't my business because you need to build that muscle up so that when somebody has an opinion of you <laughs> like and, and you are confronted with it, you're able to reflexively without even thinking about it, pull that up in your head. And, and so it's so much of just like that, that positive self-talk just constantly throughout the day. You know, it's so easy to block out our thoughts with podcasts and TikTok and things like that. And to sort of like let that play in your head, as like Olivia said, almost like a subliminal conscious, like reprogramming that is a tape in our own minds. What is something that most people aren't aware of when starting over? Like what most people don't think about? Maybe you can shed some light on that. Like what, what's common that people are like, oh, I didn't think about that. Or, you know, those, those challenges that catch us off guard. 
I was going to say that you really do need to build a support system of people that can can work with you, right? So whether you are, you know, buying a house or graduating from somewhere or going through a breakup, it's great to have experts, but you have to also have experts that you trust and experts that you feel comfortable with. And if you don't feel comfortable with them, then, you know, making the decision to stop working with them and, and find somebody new, which is really, really tricky. So, you know, I think that most people don't realize that you don't have to go through this alone. And it's okay to pay people to support you when you're going through these. Like whether you have a divorce coach, which actually can save you a ton of money and help you, you know, strategize when you're going through divorce, or an amazing life coach, which you know I always recommend really doing your research on life coaches and using a pro, like using like a place like Fresh Starts or a, a very vetted place for life coaches. Um, but there are people that will support you, and you don't have to go through that alone. And I would say, I think that you might be surprised where you end up. You know, people really think they come out of these big life decisions and their lives are often more shaken up than they expected. I did not expect to end up in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> these things happen. And I think you you really, at that moment of change, it is the time to, like I said before, really look inside, really interrogate those decisions and as Olivia said, fresh starts beget fresh starts. So now's the time to figure out what you really want and to start pursuing that. And it might it might really surprise you. Yeah. I love that it's a chance for you to, it's almost like a second chance at life. Like, let's do what you want to do. Let's do what makes you happy this time around if you weren't doing that before. So... Absolutely. And I love that you you can have a fresh fresh start anytime. <laughs> anytime. Every day. Every, every day time in your life. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So for the people listening who know someone going through a big change, like maybe they're not going through a big change, but someone else in their life is, what advice do you have for those people to be the support? Yeah. I mean, I think Olivia and I think about this a lot because as she said, community care is self-care. And it's very important to us that when people come to Fresh Arts or learn about fresh starts, that they understand this is not a gift grab. <laughs> you know, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're trying to bridge the gap between the supporters and the people starting over and take out the overwhelm from fresh starts. So when you have somebody in your life going through a fresh start, I think it's important to just reach out to them and let them know that you're there. There are so many ways that you can support somebody through a fresh start, whether it be buying gifts off their registries or we have worksheets on the website, which is like, I did research for you. So I, if it, I was doing it for my sister when she was going through her divorce, I'd be like, I found you six divorce lawyers. Here's their names. Here's their information. And and I, I gave, did some research for you because it's so overwhelming. You can call people for them. You can help them pack. You can help them unpack. There are so many different ways. And we have all of this laid out on the website of different ways to help people when they're going through a fresh start. And as Olivia said, within our 250 scripts, we have talked about this many times of what you can say to somebody to support them. Um, going through a fresh start, I'm proud of you is always a big one. You know, there are so many things like, even when it's a choice that they didn't make, you can still be proud of them for getting through it. And you can still be proud of them for surviving it. There's there's just a countless number of ways to support people. But showing up, I think, is the number one. Showing up, shooting a text over, seeing how you can help them, and letting them know that they're loved and supported. Yeah. No, this is a really good reminder because a lot of people do care about the people in their lives. But I don't think we're really taught how to support and how... like. I, yeah. So I think the fact that you, you offer that resource, these scripts and things, ways for people to help it, is really good. It's, it really is refreshing. It's like, wow, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> you know, you know, nice. we were kids that we had a lot of like, we've gone, our parents were divorced and we had a lot of adults saying things to us that I think they thought were helpful. <laughs> and, and we would tell our parents and they would say, I think they were trying to be nice. People don't know what to say. And I think we brought that into our adulthood and it's like, well, <laughs> we'll help you, you know, because so often when you are talking to somebody and they're going through a fresh start or they're going through a big change, the first thing that you say can sort of make or break the conversation and the relationship a little bit, right? So it can push it one way or the other. So our scripts offer a way to be like a really good starting off point. And then from there, you know, you set the mood of that conversation. 
Yeah. I mean, off the top of your mind, what are some like like do's and don'ts? Like what are some definite, like don't say this, this is so common, but it's not right. Or, and then what are some options that you suggest? One of the things I know, you know, just from going through my own divorce, um, and then I'll let Jenny take this one because she write, does a lot of writing about this, but you know, is is a lot of well-meaning people told me just to go out and date right immediately. And I was like, my ex-husband's still li- living in the house. Like, I'm not going to go out and date. Like, um, or, you know, things like that, or to kick my ex-husband out, you know, things that were just not helpful. I also get a lot as a single mom, people will say, I don't know how you do it. Well, I just, you know, it's like, I just do it. That's yeah. Like life, it doesn't right? make you feel good, right? It doesn't. Like you know, and people, mm-hmm. again, they're well-meaning, but we're trying to help right. people learn to, to not me- necessarily say these things. But Jenny definitely writes about this a lot. Yeah, I think that the general, like, I don't know how you do it. I couldn't do it. You know, that kind of thing, especially when people are going through changes that they maybe didn't want to make or that were foisted upon them. Um, You know, to just say, I'm so proud of you for handling this, or I'm so sorry that this is now part of your story is a good one. Like when somebody's grieving a loss or, you know, something that, that they didn't want, I'm so sorry, this is now part of your story um, is very helpful. You know, there are so many different things. I'm, my mind is flooding with things that people say that are that are not useful. But generally, I think what it comes down to is not meeting people where they are and giving people maybe the advice that you would want to get. And you have to remember when you are interacting with the people that love you in your community that hopefully they are different than you right? You've surrounded yourself with people that love you that are not exactly like you. And my sister and I are great examples of this, which our brains work very differently. And I tried for years to support her by buying her kitchen organizational tools and supplies and things like that. And I was like, look, you can put your cereal in this and you can put your bread in this. And they would just go unused. <laughs> she could, It wasn't for her. And it's a great lesson. And like, I wasn't, I was giving her what I wanted, what I needed. I wasn't giving her what she needed. And that's so true when it comes to words and actions. And so saying to people, I love you. I'm here for you. I can support you in these ways because often when people are going through these changes saying, let me know what I can do, feels like another overwhelming task right, for them. Right. So saying, I can support you in these ways. Please let me know which one you choose. And then offering things that you feel comfortable seriously offering, right? Not, not going against your own boundaries and being like, I can drive your kids to school every day and then resenting your friend because now you're driving their kids to school every day. You don't want to do that. But saying, I can bring over dinner once a week. Like that's something that I'm capable of and allowing them to choose from sort of like menu of, of support. That's a really good advice because I, I, that's something I've never heard before either. People usually like they want to help. Let me know how I can help you. But that puts the pressure on the other person to and they don't want to, they usually don't, you know, ask. It feels like it an, feels, empty, an empty offer. Yeah, exactly. So I like that offering clear things that are within mm-hmm. your boundaries. Yeah. And I would exactly. say too, like remembering yeah. that when somebody's going through a fresh start or whatever the brave decision that they may, they may say things to you that don't like they're, they're, they are not maybe in the same mental headspace that they normally are. Right. So don't take what they're saying to you as like something that could potentially end a relationship or a friendship because, you know, your ego really shouldn't be in it in that moment. Right. And that's what a friendship is, is that sometimes you're, you know, you support them. Sometimes they support you and that's a beautiful thing. But you know, if you're, if you offer to bring dinner for your friend and, you know, they say, well, I didn't want to talk goes. And it's like, well, you know, well, maybe they are grieving or maybe they're going through something like it's not about you. It's, you know, and so not projecting our own feelings. Yeah. Don't taking anything personally, understanding they're going through their, yeah, it, it is true. Cause when people are going through a big emotional change, they're going to act out of character and you're, you have to be open and understanding of that. Yeah. One of the things that I, I just wrote about this today actually was that when in your relationships and in your interpersonal relationships with people, you should assume best intentions. Because if you can't assume best intentions, then you probably shouldn't have a relationship with that person. And so with my girlfriends and guy friends, but I, you know, I'm in my sort of girlfriend era right now with my girlfriends, I assume best intentions. So 
on the occasion where somebody says something, I'm like, oh, that didn't feel very good. I think, you know, I'm going to just let it rest. I'm going to see. And almost always they come back and they're like, I'm sorry, I was fighting with my mom or I'm sorry, I had a bad day at work. And I, it doesn't, it's nice because it doesn't have to harm the relationship. And you can say to them, hey, that that felt a little off. But to assume the best intentions of your community, I think um, is it, it's building a strong community as opposed to just a big one because that doesn't serve us. Yeah, no, that's a really good tip for building. Like even like adult relationships, these are like the little things that people don't really talk about, but how to how to be a good friend, how to understand people, how to apologize, all of this. Um, and another thing that you talked about that I can relate to is something I have learned too is like not giving people what you would want, but giving people what they would want. Because <laughs> people, everyone is different. Everyone has a different love language, like and understanding the other person. And that takes a lot of awareness. <laughs> it takes a lot of, like that's a whole... It, it, I don't know. I think that's a soft skill people don't really talk about either. It does take a lot of awareness and it takes time. I mean, I, I'm i 36 years old and it was just this past winter that I said to my sister, Olivia, like when I'm upset and you give me space, it makes me feel bad. And we've been having a relationship at that point for 35 years. You know, we've been, we've been really close for 35 years. And so it was something that she she thought, well, when I'm upset, that's what I want. So she was giving me what she thought I I wanted as close as we are. And so it takes a lot of awareness. It takes a lot of knowing that, again, it goes back to it, knowing that you're worthy of relationships that feel good and that serve you and knowing that the people that love you want to love you the way that you need to be loved. So it's like knowing that you're worthy of that soft nest that you can tell them this isn't working for me or this isn't what I need. Um, and that they'll go, okay, and that, you know, I'm going to make the adjustment and that they won't yell at you or something like that. Yeah. It's kind of, it's, it's on both people. It's on the other person to try to understand the other person. And then it's, on, if you're the one going through something, it's on you to, to understand yourself and to communicate what you need instead. Cause I think some people who aren't aware, they might get mad if people aren't treating them or giving them what they want. And yeah, so it, it goes both ways. It's something to, to be aware of. It's hard. And I think it's hard as adults, like we have to find people that are sort of willing to do that with us and willing to, you know, be on that vibration with us and communicate and work with us and, you know, have this ongoing lasting relationships. But it is tough. It's tough to meet those people. It's tough to find those people. And it's tough to um, have ongoing, long lasting, especially like, I don't know about you, but Olivia and I's friends are all over the world. So that's another added element. Right. But ultimately it's, I think the relationship is about like seeking to understand the other person and also understanding yourself and communicating that because people, they're not going to read your mind. (laughs) You're a hundred percent right. Okay. So next I want to ask you both to share any surprising or favorite stories since you started this company. I'm sure you have a lot of good ones. Um, Yeah, we do. One of the ones that we love to talk about is that we have our bundles of products on the website that um, the registry side that we have researched and we put these products together to make people's lives easier. And one of the bundles that I spent a lot of time researching and developing was a bundle for a children's room because a lot of women have to leave the marital residence when they get divorced and downsize. And so we've had a lot of women who have come to build registries after their divorce and will fill up the registry with these products that we recommend and we'll get pictures and videos of their children's room all set up and ready to go with the items that we recommend. And it's really beautiful because that's why we started the company is to support people through these life changes and to, uh, you know, eliminate the overwhelm and make life a little bit easier for them. And it's just really awesome to see. You know, it's an interesting thing to leave an engagement. It's kind of, I I never really knew anybody that had, I knew only a couple people that had done that. And I, that's sort of this, these women who are in their early thirties and don't have kids yet. And it's a different sort of group than my sister interacts with. And so it's been really interesting for me to get messages from people that I kind of know, people that I don't know at all that have said, you know, I heard your story and the sort of crux of my story is it doesn't have to be bad for it not to be good. Like it, it was never a bad relationship. It was always fine. It just wasn't the one I was supposed to be in. And so for people to hear those words and then go, 
hear that and know that they also don't have to be in that kind of relationship. And they've left and they're able to go pursue like happier, exciting lives and to have them reach out to me and tell me that my words help them feel less alone is honestly, it's, it's a high, like nothing else. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I can, I imagine. Um, okay. So what about your biggest challenges since starting this company? Let's talk about some of the challenges and how you overcame them. Um, yeah, well, one of the challenges was how do we make money, right? So uh, I actually had a little bit of experience in the registry space. I was the marketing director for a baby registry website for a while. So I had a little bit of experience there. And I knew that actually registries themselves really don't bring in money at all, <laughs> except for a couple of Amazon affiliate pennies here and there. And so we needed a way to build a company that we could help people and support people, but also we have to obviously, you know, feed my children. And so uh, we decided to build out a community for our experts, which we we call the Fresh Starts Expert Community. And in that community, we brought in our marketing background. So it is a business development, marketing, and public relations community. So our experts pay a monthly membership fee to be a Fresh Starts expert. So they are listed on the website and we support them in business development, marketing, and we do PR for them. So we've gotten our experts in um, hundreds of press pieces over the last two years and on podcasts and all sorts of great things. And we have these wonderful relationships with them and uh, it's been awesome. So that's, you know, one of the big things was like, we knew what we wanted to do in terms of the company, but how do we work backwards and figure out how to make money? And it's been just great, like being able to still have our hat, you know, in the marketing ring and work with all these experts and small businesses and see everybody grow and support everybody. Yeah, no, that's smart that you brought in the marketing PR background because it makes so much sense and you have that expertise. Do you still have your marketing agency or, or not anymore? We do, we do. We so do. does it work together with Fresh Starts? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we've, okay. we've been much more intentional about the clients that we take um, at this point because we had to, you have to balance it. Like, you know, it, it, well, as one scaled up, the other had to scale down. So we were very um, exclusive about the clients that we take. So we work with like diversity um, and inclusion education specialists and things like that, where we feel really good about what we're doing Um with their social media. Yeah, we do we do high level strategies for people. I do business consulting and coaching and podcast consulting and all that good stuff. And then we also offer within our expert community, um, more like private coaching and group coaching, uh, you know, in terms of business development and things like that too. But yeah, we, we know we both love marketing. My background's in marketing and PR. Jenny's is in more, um, tech, uh, management and, you know, business development and graphics. And so we kind of come from a different angles and we do very different things on, on, you know, I manage our podcast and, um, the press stuff. And then Jenny does all of, you know, all anything you see on the website and all the back end, and we kind of split things up, you know, and she handles workflows and all that stuff. And so it's been really cool to work together and figure out what works for us. And, you know, we are really big about community, obviously. And so we still nurture our relationships and networking within our marketing community and uh, all of those wonderful places. Yeah. I'm curious, how big is your team? Like, is it just the two of you? Like, how how fast did you scale? How big is it really? I mean, it's actually, I was going to say one of the other, um, like sort of things that we struggled with, our team is two. It's okay. us. And then oh, we wow. have, we, yeah, we have our amazing publicist, Beth, who's has her own firm. Um, but that is like our only person that That's we've amazing. brought in really, you know, one of the, the things that came up early on was, do you want to look for investment money? And we 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 were talking to some great people that were really excited about it. But ultimately, we had to make a decision of, do we want to own this company 100% and scale slowly and scale at a speed that we feel comfortable with and that works with our lives because we are in the pursuit of joy every day? Or do we want to like, you know, sort of work for somebody else in a way because we owe them, you know, something back? And so that was a decision that we made, which was we're going to, grow this thing at the pace that we're going to grow it at. We're going to grow it slow, like 
at a very steady pace. We're going to grow it so that it lasts forever because we want to retire on Fresh Starts. We want Fresh Starts to last and grow and be this huge empire of support and empowerment. Um, and we really wanted to stay true to that. So that was another thing. So it is just the two of us at this point. Wow. Um, and we are tired. <laughs> it is. I'm like, yeah. That's amazing. It's the two yeah. of you. Plus you have other jobs to do. <laughs> yeah, we do a yeah. lot. We do a lot. And right. We uh, and we're really grateful. We have so many people that support us just, you know, in little things like tagging us on Instagram posts and comment sections and making sure that if they, you know, if we need to do a lunch and learn that they show up and they help us out, whatever it is. And so, you know, we are really grateful for the community that we've cultivated. I am a huge fan of um, intention, intentional and authentic networking and, and being true and honest. And it does come back, right? Karma does come back. And so we are really passionate about building this community outwards. But yeah, we work really hard. and It's just the two of us and someday we'll sleep again. Uh, no, because I'm sure there's a lot of gaps between the both of you. Like there's things you don't know what, how to do in, in starting a business. So like, are, do you just work together to figure things out? What's, how does it normally work? We have a great legal team. That's very important. And one of my best friends is an accountant. So she comes in when we need her. So again, we and we found our legal team through somebody in our community. And we found Beth through somebody in our community, uh, through Twitter, right? They connected with her on Twitter. So we love building our village and building our network. And again, sort of solid, intentional way. And we know when we encounter something that we that's out of our depth, we go find an expert for that. Um, but and unless if we can figure it out, we figure it out. Like when we started our pot, like we wanted to start a podcast last year. We didn't know really how to do that or what to do. And so we talked to some of our friends that had podcasts and they were really helpful. Right. So just like cultivating those friendships and the relationships we have, but yeah, you're totally right. There are things that we definitely spend a lot of time researching and yeah. figuring out. And, you know, I think that's what makes it a sustainable business is that, you know, we are the ones that understand every single thing that happens at the business. I enter interact with our experts all day long. And so we know that we stand behind everything that we do because it's us doing it. We're not just like a, you know, founders that, you know, there are a lot of founders of companies that will throw a lot of money into a business and then they'll walk away. You know, that's not us. We are here every day. Yeah. No, I, it, it's really empowering to hear that. You, like I hear that mindset of you believe you're worthy of it. So you just do it. And, and it is smart. If you don't know how to do something, you find an expert or you just do a lot of research. I, yeah, that's really nice to hear. What is your long-term vision for Fresh Starts and for your life? Like, what do you hope to grow towards? Well, we're working on a book. So that's like our first project here. Yeah, immediate <laughs> long-term, yeah. That, I mean, that's our immediate long-term. Um, and, you know, we have our podcast, which is wonderful. And we're on, we're starting season four next month with a, a, a new series. And um, long-term... We have a television show in production. Well, in early, early, early production, but in it's get it's happening there. And then, you know, some I bigger am. pieces with our experts and 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 working with them on different projects. We have conferences and retreats that we're building out and different small group coaching. So we have a lot of big, big things in the works, uh, but we like to try to take it one day at a time. Though that's really <laughs> hard for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds super exciting. It's like you, it, it feels like you you dream so big because, you know, this type of missus, you don't have to have a TV show, but the fact that you're doing all these things, a book, podcast, TV, like, it's, I don't know. I think it's exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It is. You know, Olivia is a big dreamer and I have been humbled enough times by not believing in her dreams and watching them come true that <laughs> I'm like, okay, I believe now I'm on board. So I, you, you know, we, like you said, it's different skill sets and we support each other, but I think long-term, you know, we just want to be empowering people and supporting them and educating them on what a fresh start can be. And the, you know, that changes aren't failures and all of that. And changing the way that we look, that we view registries is really important for us too. You know, traditionally, the, and the market share, right, has, has the wedding and baby registry. There really isn't a place for the registry for every other life change. And that's what Fresh Starts is. So we always like to say we're the life registry for any of those brave life decisions and big life moments. So really kind of shaking up the industry in that way and saying, hey, 
you know, you graduated medical school, great, get a registry, right? Or it's your first apartment, get a registry. Because we see and we talk to so many women, especially, who are not going to have children and who are not going to get married or who haven't yet. And they feel really isolated and really left out because they didn't go through those traditionally registry-centric right uh, life moments. And so we are here to say we we've got you, we support you, and you deserve a registry. I love it. So do you have any final words that you'd like to share with our audience today? Anyone listening who might be going through like a restart in life? I think we're proud of you. And we know that it took a lot of work to get to the point to make that decision and to make that change. And we hope that if you are looking to find support, you come and you find us um, and you feel you feel welcomed and you feel supported and you find a way to communicate with your people and your village what you need. Yeah, I would say that you're worthy, right? Like we talked about, you are worthy. And to start with those positive affirmations, even if it's really simple, like I am worthy, I always tell people, put them on post-it notes and put them all over your house and just remind them, uh, remind yourself of them all the time. And also um, get back to things like creativity, right? Paint, listen to music, move your body. Start really like disconnecting yourself from your phone at night and just calming your nervous system down. I don't think people realize that when their nervous system is calm and they're not in fight or flight, it is a completely different life that you can lead. And that takes a little work, right? Flexing that fresh start muscle takes a little bit of work, but it can be done and you are not alone. And as long as Fresh Starts is here, people can come and feel like they are part of our Fresh Start family and we will hold their hand and we'll get to wherever they want to go together. Amazing. Thank you both for sharing today. Where can we find you online? Yeah, we're freshstartsregistry.com and we're Fresh Starts Registry on Instagram. On Twitter, we are Fresh Starts here. And yeah, you can find us on all those places. Our podcast is called A Fresh Story and that's on Spotify and anywhere you find podcasts. And that has a lot of people's different fresh starts. We wanted people to understand what, what a fresh start can be. It can be anything from a breast reduction to a new mm. job to a divorce. And um, it's a good way for people to connect with different kinds of stories. Beautiful. Thank you both so much. I, I loved you. our conversation and I, I fully support what you're doing. Oh, Keep thank going. You. <laughs> thank you. It was wonderful. 